I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. For reasons that I don't entirely understand, and I feel like I was pretty invested in the telling of, of the foibles of the Vancouver Canucks over the last several months here. Um, but I don't entirely understand why the Canucks waited until Sunday morning to fire Bruce Boudreaux. But the hockey world clearly was in tune, focused, very passionate, certainly the fan base in Vancouver, maybe even fixated right on this for weeks. So in-season changes seldom go well, right? Mm. Now, they, the, the club may improve. I mean, you may get a bump as the Vancouver Canucks got. They called it the Boudreaux bump when he replaced Travis Green. But Bruce's popularity with the fans and the media complicated this situation, maybe in tow with the fact that, look, Canucks management ownership had their reasons, whatever they are, and and Rutherford and and Patrick Galvin tried to articulate some, probably not all, but they had their reasons for waiting as long as they did. And then you throw in the popularity of of Boudreaux um, almost globally, right? Because he's that guy. He's viewed as a nice guy. And this turned into a bit of a cesspool, in all fairness, Um, and a troubling one across across the board. So I don't know how you feel, but you you have a unique perspective on this, Mm -hmm. and I'm sure you're as happy as anyone associated with the organization or even as a fan. Okay, it's over. Now let's let's do whatever we can to move forward. Well, I'm – I mean, I'm sure most people listening or almost all people listening know that my wife works in the management group. So, you know, my perspective is, a, you know, is probably a little more closely tied. Um, right. And respectful of, of her position. I will say this, though. I, there's a couple of things that um, I don't think people understand. N- number one is... Um, most of us, or well, I, I can't think of anybody that doesn't think that when they knew that it was going in this direction, it should have been moved quicker. Like it, it just should have been moved mm-hmm. quicker. They, if they had decided that they they were going to go down this road, and the story got out in the volume that it did, even if you didn't want to, you probably mm-hmm. had to. But we don't know the reasons and won't know the reasons why that occurred. So that's the first part. The, the second part is it was also reported that, you know, uh, well, actually, Jim Rutherford and Patrick Alvine said they had been talking to people uh, over the last month or so. They first reached out. I think the timeline was a month ago or yeah. so to Rick Tockett. If people don't think this happens, they're completely naive. When you're thinking of making a coaching change, you don't just sit there, make the change this morning and go, now we're going to start to look. You might Mm -hmm. end up at that point that, yeah, we're going to make a change. There's nobody out there that we're really interested in at this point. So we will put an interim coach in place. (laughs) That that would be the way that happens. But Bruce did an article with, um, with his buddy Mike Russo in in Minnesota, and he said in the article he was watching the game in Anaheim from a hotel when Randy Carlisle got fired after the game, and it's that's not that's not a um, a kick in the shins to Bruce. That's the way that it works. If if they if they want the next coach and Bruce was available, Anaheim agreed to a deal. They had. To, They had to sign some stuff and papers and talk to Washington and all that stuff. And then Carlisle's coaching, he probably knew at that time something was going to happen. And he gets fired and Bruce comes in the next day. So I I thought, honestly, I thought Bruce did the best he could with was a crappy spot. It really was. I wish it would have been cleaner. I think a lot of people wish it would have been quicker and cleaner. Um. But that's, you know, that was explained as best as possible or as best as they wanted to explain it. And, you know, Bruce is going to do the interviews he's going to do and explain what he's going to explain. And like I mm-hmm. I heard his interview yesterday and he was, you know, with with Mike, who's a terrific reporter. And he's like, look, I'm not yeah. going to 
talk about what happened. I'm not going to throw stones anywhere. Like he, he walks away and he'll, we'll see Bruce on TV near us soon. I mean, whether, wherever it's going to be, whomever it's going to be with, he will stay in the game he loves. Mm -hmm. Well, again, we'll, we'll, I want your thoughts on talk it on foot on Gonchar and, and what you see moving forward as a coaching staff there. Um, but one more on, on Boudreaux, because the article that I read this morning, NHL.com, you know, he identifies goaltending in this piece as their biggest issue. And, and you know, says, look, Thatcher Demko, um, in his own recollection, would say that early on he struggled and then he got hurt. And, and Bruce isn't wrong. You know, normally when you see good teams and the coach is getting a ton of credit, well, there's a lot of things that factor into that and, and almost always – a higher level of goaltending sure, is, yeah. is part of that winning formula. Yeah. You know, yeah, every so I uh, I think he's fair and I think he's he's accurate in saying that. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, but last year when they went on that run after Bruce was hired, Demko was stopping the puck. I think ninety four percent of the time. If yeah. that's the goaltending you need to win, then there's other problems. <laughs> right because it, because it's just not yeah it's not a sustainable sustainable number. i think no. igor shesterkin and andre vasilevsky are two of the very best and shesterkin was 93 and a half point nine three five last year and he's not this year because it's you just can't yeah. it's too hard if i'm looking at that team yeah. clearly thatcher demko's start and injury is not been a good thing it, their goaltending plummeted no. the quality to Spencer Martin and Colin Delia, but Spencer Martin was signed as a backup. Now you got to play all the time, and it <clears throat> it never works. It just it just doesn't. Right. They're, the way they defend is about personnel, which isn't good enough, and they know it's not, and they've they're going to have to try and change it in the next eight weeks. Right. Uh, I think mm-hmm. that's pretty clear. Um, the second part is, man, they give up chances from dead center way too much. And some of that goes to the way they structure their D zone or don't structure it. And so there, there's mm-hmm. there's two sides to this. There's the the human side, which I think everybody agrees should have been handled maybe a little cleaner, a little quicker. And then there's the hockey side, mm-hmm. which – from the red line back is a mess. And I think both are yeah. fair. So that's that's the part that he's got to wear a little bit. You can't, it can't always be somebody else's fault. All right. So when we when we look at the coaching staff, Rick Tockett, obviously a head coach, you've got Adam Foote, you've got Sergey Gonchar coming in. Uh, I know two of these three guys very, very well. I don't know Gonchar as well. Um, communication is never going to be an issue with this trio, um, but I'm not sure what to expect. Again, the low-hanging fruit from some was to go after Tockett's coaching record to this point you know, mm-hmm. in his NHL head coaching career. Well, sure. you know, I'm sure you'll support this. He didn't have a whole lot of help in Arizona and probably had less help in Tampa Bay when he was there because the Tampa Bay Lightning were going through some ownership issues, and that's putting it mildly. Um so, I, I mean, I'm curious to see how this all comes together, um, you know, just based on, on the personalities, right? But Tockett has had a long time to have his conversations with Gonchar, who you know well from the Pittsburgh days, um, likely Adam Foote as well. So he obviously feels a connection and a comfort level to bring those two guys along with them to try and, and get the retool started in Vancouver. Well, uh, for sure. I mean, what coach brings in a guy he doesn't know or doesn't feel comfortable yeah. with? I mean, it, every coach that is allowed to pick his staff is going to go to people that he knows. Pete DeBoer has brought Steve Spot with him everywhere they go. You get one, you get the other. Yeah. And that's because Pete's comfortable with Steve's knowledge and with Steve's support and knowing that his message is going mm-hmm. to be supported. So I'm I mean, I don't know this, but I'm just assuming that Rick Tockett has that comfort with Sergey Gonchar and Adam Foote. If 
if people want um, a little bit of a window into what both talk it and foot are like, I didn't even know how long ago he was the coach in Tampa, Rick. I mean, 15 years or 12 years, whatever it was, 12 yeah. years, I guess. Stamkos was just a kid, as I recall. Mm-hmm. And then Adam Foot yeah, um, was. Uh, was on. Both, the point is, both of them were, have been on our podcast. And so if you mm-hmm. listen, go back in the archives, you'll get a little bit of a window in what those guys are like in their view of coaching. And both of them, Mm -hmm. I know you know them better than me, but I was surprised with both when we hung up about how much they talked about communication, about getting your message clearly to the players. Mm -hmm. So I I read an article on the report yesterday or reporting on the practice yesterday, the first one. And so they've got on the ice, there was Tockett, Gonchar, Foot, Jason King, and Mike Yo. And Mm -hmm. Ian Clark, the goalie coach. But I never count the goalie coaches because they only talk to two players anyway. Then (laughs) then with 15 minutes left in practice, the Sedins came on the ice for development work after practice with the players. (laughs) So if you're wondering if there's going to be uh, staff that touches, touch points each of the players, that that will be the case. It was not the case. Yeah prior so this will be a different staff and a different approach will it make them better i I don't know i mean they're still still the same personnel that they've talked about not being good enough that gets them into the retool and so until that personnel changes you can only get so much better i i'll be shocked if they don't become a tighter team like i'll be really surprised yeah yeah. If they don't become a, a tighter yeah. defensive team. Yeah. Well, and look, we'll we'll move on to Daryl Sutter and the Calgary Flames here momentarily. But I I again like the honesty from Talkett and his media availability, um, even to the point of of openly discussing a conversation he quickly had with JT Miller and how JT Miller expressed to him, I, I know there are areas that I've got to get better in. And that's not just as a hockey player. You know, J.T. Miller owns his abrasiveness and, you know, the emotional side of of his approach. And without saying so, that was my read from Talkit, <clears throat> but in a positive way, right? Like, here's a guy I can work with because we can see that he's a hell of a hockey player, but he's also expressed there's some some parts of, of how I approach the game, maybe how I deal with my teammates that definitely needs some polish. And and he was asking for help. That was my takeaway in that. Well, um, I, I would say, uh, you know, another difference between the two coaches are, you know, Bruce really supports the top end of his roster. Like Bruce is a, this should not yeah. go, yeah. this should not go unnoticed. Like he is a really nice person, Bruce. He doesn't mm-hmm. want people to be upset. He wants them to be happy. He wants them to produce. He wants them to play. Did you, I don't know if you saw Jim, or his first goal he scored on Jim Rutherford 50 years ago. Jimmy. Yeah, I yeah. saw and, it. Yeah. And Bruce, <laughs> just in that face, they showed Bruce on the bench the joy. Yeah. He loves the game. He wants his players to love the game. Pure elation. And there's yeah. a, the difference is that <laughs> there'll be a different style of message for the players from talking. There'll be a a harder Mm -hmm. edge to the accountability. Um, That's just the way he is. And it's one's better, one's worse. Well, whatever. It's just one person to the next person. And the, the one thing that will happen, I think is you'll see, uh, well, this is now the third one thing I think will happen that I've said, but is that the minutes of the top guys, are going to shrink and the yeah. pace of the game will try to increase because of that. That will be one of their goals. One of talk it's goals. I got to say, yeah, I'm done talking I, I, about like, the Canucks yeah. uh, because uh, I, I'm, I'm with you. Bud. I'm with you. Hell, I got to go home. Uh, but I'm looking for crying, forward for crying out loud. I got to go home <laughs> and then talk more. <laughs> no, and just uh, try not to keep my foot in my mouth. Move on. Damn it. Move on. Yeah. 